What's up guys, it's Atomic, and before I say another word, I have to let you guys know, the thumbnail that I used for this video, I did not create, and I don't own. I found it on Reddit and took it from there. Some guy named JobDone44 posted it. I didn't compensate him for using it. I didn't even ask him if I could use it, and I don't even know if he created it in the first place. So I'm hoping that I don't get hit with any kind of litigation over this because I won't be able to bring you guys future content on this channel if I do. Alright, now that's, that's out of the way, let's get into it. Obviously, I am finally chiming in on this whole controversy with Friday the 13th, the game, the rights, and the announcement we received on Monday, June 11th, that we will no longer receive future content for the game. So why is this happening now? Why is it happening at all? Who is to blame? What's going on? What, if anything, can be done about it? Let's get into it. Now, I didn't say anything right away because, one, I was kind of shocked, stunned. I didn't know what to say, and I wanted to try to get as many facts as I could before I rushed the judgment, as some people have done. So what's going on here? Over the past couple of days, I've tried to figure it out, and guys, I'm not that smart. I still have no idea. This situation is so murky, so tough to understand. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you guys, but just know, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not claiming to be an expert. Don't listen to me and say, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm just going to tell you the situation as I understand it. And then I'll share my thoughts on everything. So where do we begin? Well, we have to go all the way back to 1980. Actually, we have to go back to 1979. Somewhere during the spring or early summer, Victor Miller completed his script for Friday the 13th, the movie. He turned it in, and he was paid. He made approximately $10,000. As we know... The film ended up being made using his script. It went on to gross $40 million at the box office. And Friday the 13th ended up becoming a billion dollar franchise. Tough luck, Victor Miller. You know, I'm sure at the time, he was happy with the ten grand that he received. But seeing how other people are now making millions off of his idea that he started... Probably a little upset, you know, a little salty, and I understand that. But Victor Miller gets a second chance. Due to a provision in United States copyright law, after a set time frame of between 35 and 40 years, we're just going to say 35 years, an original author, screenwriter, songwriter, whoever, the original creator of a work has a second chance to get back the rights to their creation. Even if they have sold it off and have made money off of it, they were paid, doesn't matter. They get a second chance. In case they feel as though they weren't fairly compensated the first time around, they get a second chance. Again, it's 35 years later, but they get a chance to reclaim the rights to their creation. So here's where it starts to get a little funny, and I'm not exactly sure what happened when what offers were made, and how this all went down. So whether or not this next part that I'm about to tell you actually happened, I'm not sure. But I assume that as this 35-year anniversary approached, Victor Miller went to Sean Cunningham and Horror Inc., who currently hold the copyright on Jason and Friday the 13th and everything, said, uh, okay guys, you've made plenty of money over the years, I want my cut. I want a little more. Yeah, I got that 10 grand 35 years ago. You guys are making millions. You're still making millions today. I want some more money. Now, did that happen or not? Was he willing to negotiate? I'm not sure. I assume he was, but again, I can't be 100% sure. Maybe he just said, nope, 35 years are up. I want my rights back. No negotiation, no nothing. I want them back. What happened when? How did it go down? I'm not entirely sure. But Victor Miller is allowed to do this based on U.S. copyright law. This is not the first time it has happened. It won't be the last time that it happens. As some of you guys are familiar, may know, 
about between, I don't know, six months and a year ago, it was announced that James Cameron was returning to the Terminator franchise. He was going to bring back Linda Hamilton and Arnold. He's going to make a new Terminator film. Well, how can he do this? He doesn't have the rights. Well, he's getting them back. See, James Cameron wrote the Terminator in 1984, and he sold his script. Allegedly, he sold it for a dollar, because he wanted a special provision that said he could direct the film. But anyway, he sold his script. He gave up his rights. 35 years are coming up. 1984, it's going to be 2019 next year. He's already said, I'm getting my rights back. So again, Victor Miller is totally entitled to this. Now it is surprising that, you know, some deal could not have been worked out. There is enough money to go around for everyone. But again, how much does Victor Miller want and what does he want? We don't really know. Did he want a large lump sum of cash? Did he want, you know, future earnings, any future products? Did he want a cut? Or, again, did he just say, nope, I want back my creation, no negotiation? We don't know. But we do know the end result. The end result was Victor Miller filed his termination of grant of rights. And in June of this year, 2018, he would gain back the rights to everything he created in the first Friday the 13th, the movie. Now, to stop this, again, they couldn't cut a deal, apparently, whether or not his asking price was too much, or they just didn't want to cough up any money. Sean Cunningham and Horror Inc. sued Victor Miller. So, Victor Miller is the defendant in this case. Okay, he is legally entitled to get back his creation. Horror Inc., Sean Cunningham, they want to stop this. So, they sued him. Now, their lawsuit, here's where it gets even murkier. All right, there is another provision in the copyright law that basically states, look, if you are freelance, you know, if you write your own script, your own song, your own book, whatever, then you go on to sell it, yes, after 35 years, you can come back and claim it. You can claim back the rights, try to get a better deal. If you are already employed by someone, then you can't get those rights back. So, again, if you wrote your own song, your own book, your own story, whatever, you go on to sell that, you can come back and claim the rights. If you're already employed by a production company or whoever, a director, if, they're, if they've got you on the payroll first, and then they say, okay, you're on my payroll, you work for me, I need you to help me write this story, I need you to write this story, whatever. Well, in that case, no. You can't claim the rights. The rights go to whatever company you were employed by. So that is the argument of Cunningham and Horror Inc. They're saying, nope, Victor Miller, he was our employee. He was employed by us. Therefore, we own the rights to everything that he created. So that's why it's at a standstill now. Now, recently, a document emerged which seemed to bolster Victor Miller's case. I don't know how or why or when, but it was kind of established that, like, June 4th was the day that Cunningham hired Victor Miller. For some reason, in what I have read, that June 4th date became quite important. Well, recently, memos were discovered that a version of the script written by Miller had been floating around in late May. So that would, you know, if they're saying, look, we hired this guy in June, we have documentation that he was our employee in June, well, that's all fine and well, but if there's other documentation that says... Uh, the script was already written prior to that, that would bolster Miller's claim that, look, I was, you know, essentially freelance. I wrote this on my own. I wasn't employed by anyone. Therefore, I get the rights back. So it's just my opinion here that these recent relevations have really helped out Miller, at least in the sense that He's in a better situation now to negotiate. 
to get a better deal from Horror Inc. and Cunningham, because even if Miller wins the case, he's not going to own a whole lot. What does he own? Well, everything he created that's in the first film. Now, what did he create? What didn't he? It's been established he didn't come up with the name Friday the 13th, so he wouldn't get that. He would get all of the characters in the first film. Well, the hockey mask wearing killer that we all love and, you know, maybe fear, he wasn't in the first film, so he wouldn't own that Jason. But he did create Jason's backstory. You know, this deformed kid that was picked on, neglected, and drowned in a lake. He created every other character from Alice to Pamela. Did he come up with the name Voorhees? I know there's been some dispute on that. I'm just going to say for the sake of argument, he did. He also created Camp Crystal Lake. So, of everything that we know today, when you think about the franchise, you know, what do you think of? You think of the name Friday the 13th. You think of Jason and his hockey mask. Okay, Victor Miller doesn't get any of that. And as far as the game goes, well... Again, that's not his. But Crystal Lake kind of is synonymous with Jason, and he would get that, and there are plenty of references to Crystal Lake, even one of the maps named Crystal Lake in the game. So he would get that. So if Miller wins and there's no deal reached, I mean, the franchise really could be fractured. And again, this only applies to the United States. So, you know, so many things could happen if Miller wins. And there's no negotiation. I mean, if he wins, he could, in theory, make his... He could sell the rights to what he has. Or he could make his own film and call it, you know, Camp Crystal Lake or The Crystal Lake Murders. And, you know, it could be its own thing. Meanwhile, someone else can still make a Friday the 13th film with some killer wearing a hockey mask called Jason. And that would be its totally other thing. It just wouldn't have any references to Jason's backstory. Probably not his mother either. And no Crystal Lake. But again, because it takes... You know, this is only in the United States. You could have something released in Europe that does reference Crystal Lake. So it's just so complicated and really so silly. Because at the end of the day, there's plenty of money to go around. You know, it's us fans that are getting screwed. You know, we're the reason why this franchise is so popular. And who gets screwed? Us. You know, the millionaires continue to fight over millions, where there's plenty of money to go around, where we have made them rich, and now we're the ones getting screwed by all of this. So why is this affecting our game, and why is it affecting it now? Well, again, with Victor Miller and his termination of Grant of Rights, it applies to anything after June of 2018. He filed that termination. He gets everything that he created back. There are elements within the game that reference his work. Again, this doesn't affect anything in the past that was already created, but going towards the future, you know, it belongs to Victor Miller. And Gun Media, they didn't pay Victor Miller anything so they can't use anything associated with his creation in the future. So obviously, Gun, I believe they're just playing it safe. Again, it looks like there's going to be no judgment in this case anytime soon. It also looks like Miller kind of does have a case. So I believe that they are just playing it safe. You know, if they release any kind of content, Victor Miller could say, hey, look, they are, even if they released it for free, he could say, look, I own this. You know, I own Camp Crystal Lake. They're using it to profit. You know, they're selling copies, free DLC, free Uber Jason. Well, who cares? Uh, it may be free, but they're still selling the, the game, you know, with my content in it. I want to get paid. So I believe Gun is just playing it safe. They don't want to get entangled in any kind of legal mess. Now, again, I say playing it safe because this only applies to future work. Some people were saying, well, look, we know Uber Jason is in the game files already. 
Okay, people on PC, because of this mess of an update that recently came out at the end of May, uh, some people got to unlock him. And it could also be argued that, hey, technically he's been in the game since December. He was in the virtual cabin. So, well, technically we're not really adding anything new to the game. He was already in the game. But again, I think they just want to play it safe. We don't know what's going to happen with the outcome of this case. You know, why should they take a chance? Now, I will say there are some conspiracy theories out there saying that Gunn knew all along, and the whole reason they announced no new content is because they just want to be done with the game. Okay, this latest update, you know, while it didn't totally break the game, it turned the game into a complete mess. Now, in playing in the last couple days, it's gotten better, but... It's still terrible. And some have said, nope, they're just abandoning it. The game is screwed. Screw everyone. I don't believe this. Now, should they have known this was coming? Yes. It was public knowledge that the grant of rights had been terminated. June 2018, nothing new can be added after that. Well, they probably didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, who knows about all this legal mumbo-jumbo you know, we just want to play a game. They just want to make a game. I assume they thought they were fine. And then, you know, someone said, oh, nope, guys, look, we thought this case would be over. It's not going to be. His termination is going to go through. You know, we filed this legal matter to try and stop it. But with no ruling, it's going to go through. Also, you have to know, based on what we know, we don't know what future content was coming. All we know was Uber Jason was supposed to be released, as well as the Grendel map. Outside of that, nothing else was really confirmed. We can assume there were some leaks. Maybe there was a pajama costume pack. You know, maybe there would have been kill packs for other Jasons. We don't know. But I believe, you know, Gunn still planned on monetizing this. And we know that because of the leak of Uber Jason. You know, he had six kills. You know, I've seen him performing six different kills. So, obviously, they were going to release him, probably with his three standard kills. And then they were going to sell a kill pack. And, again, they could have sold costume packs, other kill packs, and made more money. So, I don't think they'd leave money on the table. You know, to just say, oh, the game's a mess. We're not going to bother fixing it. We're abandoning all this content. I don't believe it. I don't think they would leave all that money on the table. Any future earnings they had a chance of making. Why would you do that? Also, why waste all that time creating Uber Jason? Again, we know that he's practically finished. You know, a little touch up here and there. Fix some of the stun issues. Maybe add his own music. But for the most part, he's done. Why would you, I mean, that took time and money, and now it's all a waste. So, while they should have known this was coming, and when did they know, who knows. I don't think they're abandoning the game because this patch, quote-unquote, broke the game, and they don't want to have to deal with it anymore. And, you know, they have said, look, we're committed to this game going forward, we're going to iron out all the bugs, we're still going to bring dedicated servers... Well, I think that's just complete garbage. I don't think dedicated servers are ever coming to this game. I didn't think they were coming before. But in wake of this news, and the fact that they won't be able to monetize it any further, I see no reason why they would bring dedicated servers. They're expensive, they're expensive to maintain, and they're not going to make any more money off this game. Now... Let's be honest, they made a shit ton of money on this game in the first place, alright? I mean, they had it kickstarted for them um, to, what, 1.2 million they got to make this game? And this game has sold, you know, boatloads of copies. The last that I have heard, and this was way back in August of last year, was that it sold roughly around 2 million. And those were all digital sales. Since that time, the game has been released on physical copy... You know, they've released kill packs, cl I mean, clothes. They have made a shit ton of money. And to be fair, we have gotten a lot of free content in return. But I just don't think that they would abandon making more money because the game is a wreck. And at the same time, now that they can't make any more money, 
why bring dedicated servers? As far as the future, you know, people are saying, well, that's it, the game is dead. Well, not really. I mean, look, all games eventually stop releasing content. Now, a lot of times, this has to do because a sequel is in the works, you know, whoop. Call of Duty, we got our season pass, map packs, whatever. Now the next one's coming out, so no more. Same with games like Battlefield and, you know, you name the franchise. You know, any sports franchise. Most games die because, well, another one is in the works. Here, you know, a little bit different. There's nothing in the future, no content, but the game isn't changing. And we're not missing out on a whole lot of content. Now, obviously... With no, you know, when they announce, look, no more Jasons, no more maps, can't even get any more emotes. <laughs> we all love our emotes, right? Yes, that will drive people away. They're going to say, well, this is it, this is the best it is, I'm not going to play anymore. But again, if everything can get ironed out, and if they can still, you know, do alterations to the game, it won't die. At least not right away. Yes, people may not be as interested as much, but you're still going to have plenty of people playing. The PlayStation 4, you know, player base is still solid. There are still a ton of people playing this game. So, no additional content. That's not what's killing this game. I'll show you what is killing this game. Obviously, the bugs are the biggest issue. You know, with this latest update, I thought it was going to save the game. You know, interest in the game had been going down, but this update promised so much content. It was going to be great. It was going to save the game. People were going to be interested again. More people would come into the game. Older players would be back. It was going to be awesome. While I did love the content, and I love the single-player challenges... Way too many bugs and glitches that make me think it wasn't tested at all, or it was tested on bots. And some people will defend this now and say, well, it's because of this uh, lawsuit coming, they had to get it out. Bullshit. Okay, any kind of time frame doesn't mean you get excused for releasing something in the state that this was released in. It just doesn't. And from, you know, Rainbow Blood, to more rubber banding, to the Jittery Counselors, it was just a complete mess. Now, the next update that we got that was supposed to fix everything, well, it fixed a couple things. It brought on more issues. Just a nightmare. Why do I want to keep playing this whole buggy mess? And again, for just, you know, me personally, having to get used to a new grab... You know, I didn't like it. I've been playing for a year already. Why do I have to deal with this now? Was it really necessary? Uh, but another big issue for me personally is Jason, you know, being turned into kind of a pussy. You know, a punching bag for the counselors. And this has been going on since August of last year. When the game first released, you know, I mained AJ as a counselor. I wanted to be as stealthy as possible, hide... Didn't want anything to do with Jason. But as time went on, I got better at the game. Others got better at the game. Now, Jason is no longer feared. They nerfed his grab range. It's not as bad as they initially nerfed it to. But it's still pretty bad. Again, it's a new grab to get used to. And he could no longer double up on his traps. Now, as you see, with this situation here, I have to deal with two counselors. I am totally defenseless. If I grab one counselor, the other one's going to hit me. Grab one, before I can kill him, the other one gets me. So I could slash, right? Well, the problem with slashing in this game is you as Jason can be stunned, but the counselors can't. Again, here, grab, nothing I could do. So I could slash someone once, as I go to slash them again, they swing right through it. They stun me. One of the changes that I was hoping for in this game was that there would be some kind of a counselor stun when you slash them as Jason. I mean, I'm fucking Jason Voorhees. These guys should be on the run. But no, they want to attack me. And again, there's not much I can do. They're, they're loaded up with med sprays and thick skin. Grab them. The other guy hits me. Slash. They'll swing right through it. Spray up to heal themselves. 
I was going to make this whole video about changes I wanted to see in the game. You know, things that I thought could help the game. From things like this, adding some kind of a stun to counselors to, you know, deter them. As counselors, they shouldn't be coming after me. They should be running. But no. Here we go. They want to kill me. Again, that's what the game has really turned into. People just attacking Jason. And look. I understand, it's fun, I do it all the time, but that's not how, at least I believe, the game should work. Another issue is just, well, what you're about to see. This makes me want to quit more than anything. In this situation here, oh, I, you know, morphed out, morphed to the wrong place, just great, they're going to call the cops. I'm not having fun as Jason, I'm struggling, this isn't fun. What happens? What do you think is going to happen here? Can you take a guess? You know what's going to happen? Time's up. Well, I make it to the phone in time. I stop them from calling the cops. All is good. And I don't have to worry about who I kill, right? Because the salt mines were added to the games. Remember that? I got news for you guys. The salt mines are bullshit. Even though I still have videos that I'm going to release in which I say, Welcome to the Salt Mines, they're all bullshit, guys. The new Jason selection process, it's bullshit. I've played enough now to realize it's all bullshit. Okay, and even with the Salt Mines, even if they were real, which they're not, they're not deterring anyone from quitting. And I kind of don't blame people either. Another big change I wanted to see in this game was giving people something to do after they die. You know, maybe I will still make that video, but whether it's spectating Jason, whether it's giving you a chance to customize your character while you wait, give people something to do after they're dead. Because here, I've killed the host, and what happens? The host says, fuck it, I'm out of here. And again, I kind of understand so guys, the game is not dead, but it needs help. So I think that's all I'm going to say for now on this issue, guys. I hope you're more informed and less confused than you were when you started listening and watching to this video. Because to be honest, I kind of am more confused. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Again, I don't understand all these rights issues. You know, we were told Uber Jason was the last Jason we were going to get. Why? Well, they didn't own the rights to Jason from Freddy vs. Jason. Well, why not? It's Jason. They didn't own the rights to remake Jason. Again, why not? Who does? How much would it cost to get them? And for the life of me, I really couldn't figure out why were we getting Uber Jason, but not Jason X. It's the same, you know, pre-Uber Jason. It's the same freaking movie. Why can't we get uh, Jason X? Who knows? Someone does. Obviously not me. But who knows? That may be another reason why we're not getting any additional content. If you remember, Uber Jason was uh, one of the stretch goals in the Kickstarter. And it was never met. Now, obviously they went on to make a buttload of money. And he was going to come to the game. But who knows? Did they have to pay extra to use the rights? To use Uber Jason in the game, and is there some kind of provision that says, look, if Uber Jason never becomes a playable character in the game, we get a refund. So, that might have something to do with it, too. Maybe, uh, look, guys, we're facing litigation if we add anything to the game after June. If we add Uber Jason in, you know, maybe we're in the clear, especially if Miller loses the lawsuit. But if he wins, you know, we'd have Uber Jason running around Camp Crystal Lake. We can't have that, so let's just scrap it. And like I said, maybe there's some kind of refund involved. Maybe they'll get some money back by not putting him in the game. Who knows at this point? Again, it's all speculation. I've tried to lay out some facts for you guys, but in the end, it doesn't matter. We're not getting any content. You know, originally they said in the foreseeable future, you know, it's pretty much done, guys. Unless, you know, a settlement is reached tomorrow, I don't think anything else is coming to the game. And like I said, the game will not die because of it. It will die if these bugs are not fixed, if other issues are not fixed. As far as the game itself, you know, if Miller wins the lawsuit, 
Or, you know, even if he doesn't, even if it's just stagnated and, you know, the grant of rights, you know, is terminated at the end of this month, you know, could the game be pulled down from the PSN store? Could it be taken offline? I have no idea, and I don't even want to speculate. You know, instances like that have happened before. I can think back, you know, whether it's a game or a DLC, there's been, you know, Marvel Ultimate Alliance was one, you know, Marvel property, a lot of those games, Deadpool, uh, the Ninja Turtle games, a couple of those, they've been pulled off the line, pulled off, pulled offline, pulled from their uh, respective, you know, Steam or PSN Store, Xbox Live, whatever. And then someone else acquires the rights, and then they come back. I mean, it's just so, you know, so silly. But it is what it is. So, you know, if the game got pulled offline, would they take the servers down? You know, I could see, you know, the argument coming from Gun. Like I said, well, we're ready for dedicated servers, but, you know, financially now, we're just not going to be able to do it. So no dedicated servers. So you would think, well, that's great. You know, in a way that we could keep playing online peer to peer, but you know, all of our stats and everything is saved online. So if somehow if the game got pulled down from you know the online stores and it wasn't able to be sold at retail anymore, would they pull you know the servers down that you know hold our stats? It's it's just a mess. So who knows, guys? But as it stands right now, like I said. I'm going to keep playing this game as long as I can. And as far as this issue, you know, with the rights, it really doesn't matter. Is Victor Miller some greedy old bastard? Uh, you know, it depends on your perspective. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, no. He did not create really anything that we have come to know and love about this franchise. All right, all he basically did was, you know, 35 plus years ago, he organized the party. He said, come to Sean's house, you know, big party, just pay 10 bucks, all you can eat and drink. And, you know, 35 years later, people are still coming. They're still enjoying themselves. They're still paying money. And now Victor is back saying, uh, you know what, guys, you got to cut me in. I need a little something. I don't blame the man. You know, for exercising his legal rights. He just wants to live out the rest of his days comfortably. And more importantly, probably wants to make sure his family is taken care of. I can't fault the guy. As much as you want to say he's greedy, well, you know, again, look at Cunningham and Horror Inc. They're being greedy too. This is just one big mess where there's plenty of money to go around. And people a lot richer than me are fighting over it. It's unfortunate that we have to get screwed over, but it is the way it is. And again, you know what? Miller winning is not the end of the world. Could it be the end of this game? Yes, but who knows? You know, a settlement could be reached, or the judge could rule in Miller's favor in July, and in August we get an announcement, new game is coming. Jason lives. You know, Gun and Hilfonic are back. This time we're going to do it right, guys. You know, dedicated servers at launch, bug-free, all the Jasons, you know, no Crystal Lake map, you know, but everything else, it's going to be great. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Again, I've gotten my $40 worth out of this game a long time ago, and I'm going to continue to get my money's worth. Like I said, I'm going to keep playing, I'm going to keep posting videos. You know, originally when I started, it was one Jason video every day. Then, you know, with this latest update, I wanted to concentrate on the single-player challenges, then the online was a mess, and I'm getting used to the new grab. I said, uh, a video every other day, guys. Then I was starting to get better with this whole grab thing, and I thought about going back to a video a day, but with this news, again, it's not going to stop me from playing, but yes, my interest is down a little bit, so I'm going to stick with that for now. One Jason gameplay every other day. On the days off, maybe I'll put up some counselor gameplay. You know, I still have to put up single player challenge number 10, which I still haven't played, by the way, and I still haven't uh, been spoiled about. So I still want to do that. You know, I'll still put up some counselor videos from time to time. But I will dip into some other games, whether you guys are interested or not. Eh, 
Honestly, it doesn't really matter. I'm doing this for my own enjoyment. Yours too, of course. So if there's something you want to see. Unfortunately, most of the other games I have are all old. I have such a huge backlog because I've been doing nothing but basically playing this game for the last year. But again, it's not dead yet. Nothing will ever truly kill Jason. So as long as there is a community to play with, I will play. Again, I consider myself a casual. I don't like playing with the same group of people day in and day out. That is something that, yeah, I would get bored of, you know, very quick. I like going into a lobby and just playing with random people. And sometimes you meet some cool people and make good friends like that. But I'm not someone that wants to play with the same people every single day. So that's about it from me, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope this has cleared some things up. Again, your opinion on the matter and my opinion, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that, no, no new content. But again, it's not the end of the world, guys. We can still keep playing. We can keep having fun. And I'm going to continue to do so as long as I can. Unless the game is completely taken down and taken offline, I will still be online. And I hope to see you guys there as well. So thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you in the next video.